What's up guys, it's Dominic Safarda. In this workout, I'll be teaching you guys five key tips you need in order to become an elite basketball player. And this is on a skill set. We're basing this all off your skills as a player and what you need in order to become to that top tier level. So for the first part, I'm gonna be talking about IQ, all right? IQ is probably the biggest thing in basketball. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. I would say it's the biggest thing in basketball outside of other things we're going to be talking about. But if you know and understand how to play the game and where you want to put certain people in positions, how to create for others, it just comes all together. And at the end of the day, as a player, you're looking to outsmart your opponent, all right? You don't have to work as hard, but as long as you know how to play basketball and put people in bad positions and put yourself in good positions, how to get other people open, how to play to your, your strength and not other teams' um, strengths, you know? We're putting them in weak positions. So stuff like that is gonna improve uh, your basketball IQ. And this all comes from knowing who you're playing, um, know what players are good at, like, and what they're not good at. So if we look at college basketball, right? Or let's say the NBA, okay? We look at the NBA. Say you're looking at the NBA Finals. Uh, we're playing, Lakers are playing the Heat last year, right? So the Lakers had a size advantage, obviously. They had Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee. So they were a bigger team, right? So they had a bigger role. So they played, they played big, they played on the big side of, uh, on the floor. They had a lot of bigger players than the Heat. For example, Duncan Robinson on the Miami Heat, his job is to catch and shoot, come off screens, get open, shoot shots, right? Knock them down. That's his job on the floor. Jimmy Butler, his job was to run the team. He had Goran, Goran Dragic out, and he was the floor general. He's the leader of that team. So he had to do everything he could to put his team in a good position to win. Now we have LeBron James. He's the best player in the world, all right? His IQ is through the roof, as you can see. He knows how to control the pace of a game. He knows how to get his teammates open. He knows how to put his teammates in good positions for them to succeed. You know what I mean? He's putting Anthony Davis in a great spot where he can finish you know, go to work, do things where Anthony Davis is playing his game, all right? Not where he has to do too much. LeBron is carrying the load and he's leading and putting all, his, all the players around him in a great role, great position, you know? The Lakers have a lot of good role players that fill LeBron's spot, you know? Uh, Rajon Rondo, great floor general. He knows how to pass. He knows, he knows how to get his teammates open. He can do everything. Rondo, Rondo's IQ is up there with anyone probably. As you can see, you see how he controls the game. If you guys were watching the finals last year, he's, Lakers lost him. You know, he's, he's a big piece to the Lakers, I think, and he's probably one of the best floor generals ever to play the game, right? All right, let's go. So our next one we're gonna be talking about is shooting, all right? Shooting the basketball, if you can shoot the basketball, you can play anywhere, all right, hands down. So shooting the basketball comes with a lot of, you know, work you gotta put into it and you got to just keep grinding to become a better shooter. Try to not miss shots. Try to make as many shots as you could in game. So you got to make open shots. You got to make contested shots. You got to be able to get your shot off whenever you want, you know? So little things like that are going to make you a great shooter. Stephen Curry can shoot the ball whenever he wants. He can create his shot whenever he wants. Um, he can catch and shoot, come off screens, which is very hard to guard. Someone who runs around all the time and is coming off screens, that's going to be a hard player to guard. You know, no one wants to be running after someone all day just trying to, you know, stop them from catching the ball, which is super hard to do, especially with Steph. But uh, stuff like that are going to elevate your shooting. And then obviously getting your form good, you know, perfecting your shooting, uh, like I said, from form and all the way trying to go to long range. You don't want to just shoot the ball, you know, like guys like that can shoot from the logo now. Damian Lillard, Steph. They're all high-level players that can shoot from beyond the arc now, which is to their advantage, and it's getting harder and harder for players to guard, all right? So now on to the next one, we're going to go with dribbling, all right? I feel like you don't have to have crazy handles or anything like, you know, like super advanced, but it's good for any player at any level to have a decent handle. What I mean by that is being able to protect the ball, not lose it, be comfortable dribbling the ball, wherever they are. Um, and this goes for any, any position from 
the bigs, you can be a seven footer to whatever, how tall you are, a small guard, all right? So I feel like a smaller guard should have better handles because you need to be a lot more skilled because you got a disadvantage, especially playing against taller players. And you got to set yourself apart from other players that are taller than you. You know, you got to have something that stands out in your game. All right. So dribbling the basketball, um, having all this reaction time is, is going to, you know, get you to where you want on the floor. If you have good handles, but you don't have the reaction time and the, you don't know how to re read and then react, that's going to hurt you because if you look at Kyrie, you look at Steph, like these guys, you set up moves, but then they read and react after off their defender, how they play them, you know? So they're not going to be like, oh, I'm going to go between legs behind the back, blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, they're just reading. Oh, my defender butts right. I know I can do any move I want to go the other direction, you know? So stuff like that, what comes in your ball handling, using your offhand, um, you have good footwork, fast feet, knowing how to change speed, change heights in your dribbling being a shifty player, um, and a, a lot of things with ball handling, you can be, I feel like if you're a good ball handler, then you'd have a pretty good, like, passing mindset. So, like, your passing ability would be better. Um, honestly, I didn't really learn how to pass the ball. I mean, I learned, obviously, from my IQ to when to pass it, how I should pass it in certain situations. That's my IQ, right? But ball handling has definitely helped me become a better passer. I throw different types of passes, like a pocket pass, over the head pass, behind the back pass, you know, all this stuff add up over the top. So ball handling does for sure help. And it'll help any player, especially the bigger players. Like imagine if Giannis were to have a nice handle, like a smooth handle. He'll be able to get wherever he wants on the floor. And he already does. So he's going to be a lot harder to guard. People are going to have to guard him from farther out. He can create a lot better for his teammates. It's just going to be good for you guys in the long run. The next one is passing. All right? So passing is very important because basketball is what? It revolves all around ball movement. You know, you have teammates on the floor. You're looking to pass. Get your teammates open. Move the ball around. Expand your game as a passer. All right? So we look at big players. We look at Nikola Jokic, right? Great passer. You see how he has court vision? He's a big, too. He mainly goes from block to top of the key, block, top of the key. You know, he can move. He's more versatile, but um, he's a great passer, and that's what makes him so good. And obviously, he can shoot the basketball from long range, so that sets him apart. But his passing is really good. So that causes other teams that can't double him. They can't double him because he's so good at passing out of stuff. He knows, how to, he knows where his teammates are. His vision is very good. So like I said, if people double team him, people really can't because he can pass out. He has teammates that can hit shots. He has stuff that can separate him in that passing stage, you know? And we look at guards. If you're a guard, obviously you need to be able to pass the ball. Rondo is a great, great passer. He passes the ball, gets people, Alonzo Ball is a great passer, push the floor, you know? But if for bigs to get that passing, passing um, skill down and learn how to put the ball in certain situations, and to have that skill to just throw a pass um, and getting it through small gaps is, is definitely a skill and definitely takes practice. It's not easy to master it. But I feel like all of these stuff I'm telling you guys, like your IQ, your passing, your dribbling, like all these tied together to make you a great player, you know? So you got to have handles to pass the ball, I think. I don't think you can just like, to be an advanced passer, that's what I'm saying, like LeBron, is a great passer, facilitator for his team, you know? So all these things are going to tie together and make you be a better player, and passing is one of them. The next one is going to be defense. You don't only want to be offensive threat, obviously. You want to be effective on both ends of the floor, all right? Defense is a big thing in any level. I mean, in the NBA, you don't see it as much, but in collegiate basketball, it's very big, all right? Collegiate basketball, you have to be able to guard your man. If you are on an island with someone, you're gonna have to be able to stick with someone. You know, stay in front of them. That's your goal. You can't be a liability. That's the biggest thing. Liability on defense is. It's hard to play somewhere if you're a liability. I mean, if you can score like 30 points a game and you don't really play defense, uh, it's not a good thing. But in order to become a great player. 
all right? You're not going to be a great player by just scoring 30 points a game. Like, there's a lot of people who will be able to score the basketball, you know what I mean? Not everyone's a good defender. So there's people who get paid just to defend. Patrick Beverly, uh, Dort on the Thunder, like a lot of people. So defense can set yourself apart too. And if people have that IQ, shooting, ball handling, passing, and now have, being a good defender, you're going to be a good all-around player. And you're going to be very elite. Defending, uh, you know, 94 feet, full court, picking up, uh, just being able to be a good help side defender, a good on-ball defender, knowing how to talk with your teammates on defense. Um, what else? Getting in the passing lanes, you know, uh, taking charges, stepping over to help your teammates. You want to be a good, a good defender, and a good defender is usually annoying, all right? Everyone knows that it's annoying to go against a good defender. Patrick Beverly is Obviously, he's very irritating, as you see, he does to a lot of players in the league. He gets in their head, he, he's a good defender, and he's strong, you know. But it's all about that dog mentality. He has a very good mentality when it comes to defense. He takes pride in it, just like uh, someone like Kevin Durant, Kyrie, or Harden were to take pride in offense. You know what I mean? They feel like they should score the ball against anyone, regardless of who's guarding them, right? So defense is another way you can set yourself apart in order to become that great player. What's up, guys? I hope you liked this video on five ways to become a great player. Uh, make sure to keep in mind that all these things are going to be hard to get down, but keep on trying to you know, push and get better every day, every month, whatever that may be, to push yourself and work on your weaknesses. All right, That's the main thing. If you have all these five traits down, I feel like you'll become a great player. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and check out the rest of my videos for more.